This is the all-in-one starter kit from Canakit for the Raspberry Pi 4. In the box, it comes with all kinds of goodies to get up and running with your brand new Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see in the box, it comes with memory cards and cables and all kinds of stuff, but the biggest thing here is that this memory card comes preloaded with everything you need to get up and running without needing another computer. This is a HDMI to miniature HDMI cable, which is great because the new Raspberry Pi uses a miniature HDMI port. And here we have the power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4. Something to note here is that the new power supplies use a USB Type-C connection, so a regular old micro USB cable will not work. And in the case, it actually comes with a Raspberry 4 themed mouse. Which is kind of cool, just looks like an old Dell mouse, but spray painted red and white. Some would say function over fashion, but I think this is a good combination of both. And then of course the toolless included case that comes with this kit is pretty cool and wraps around the Raspberry Pi really nicely. You'll see in a minute. Doesn't need any screws or anything, just pops right off by squeezing the sides and opening up the case. But it comes preloaded with all the ports that you'll need for the Raspberry Pi 4. And then we have a Raspberry Pi 4 themed keyboard, which is kind of cool. It's red and white, looks like it belongs, and it's a USB. Now this one just uses a regular old micro USB connection, but of course it comes with the cable needed in order to hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. And on the back it comes with three additional USB ports. I kind of like it, it's small and functional. Included with the kit, it even comes with a micro SD card reader. Now this is for SDHC, don't know if it works with any others, but it is only USB 2.0, so it's not going to be terribly fast. But for loading something like a Raspberry operating system, if you need to, it should do the job. Also included in the kit are three heat sinks used for various chips on the Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind that this kit does not have active cooling, which is something that my aftermarket kit that I purchased for the Raspberry Pi 3 had, which was pretty nice. And then finally, the Raspberry Pi 4 computer itself. Should note here that apparently there's a special way to open this box, but since I just kind of dig right into everything, I did not realize that, even though right here on the side it says open here. So, you know, read before you rip. This is pretty cool, two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, two micro HDMI ports, a USB Type-C connection, an Ethernet port, and of course a slot on the bottom to put in your SD card. Pretty much giving you all the basics that you would come to expect from a Raspberry Pi. And in the box it comes with a Raspberry Pi Quick Start Guide with probably some instructions, but you know, who really needs that? So, now that I got the Raspberry Pi 4 out of the box, the first thing that I need to do is put on the heat sinks. Now, a quick search on Google tells me that these three chips right here are what the heat sinks go on. So it's just a matter of removing the stickiness part of this and sticking them right on the top here. And of course, pressing down firmly to make sure they don't fall off. Now these heat sinks should help a lot with keeping the Raspberry Pi 4 somewhat cool. But again, without any kind of active cooling or a fan running through the case, there is going to be a little bit of a limitation to how far you can push your Raspberry Pi 4. If you push it past 80 degrees, you'll get a warning, and up to 85 degrees, you'll actually start thermal throttling. So depending on your usage, you may want to consider a different case. There you have it. Three heat sinks, one Raspberry Pi 4. Now, let's put this sucker in the case. Again, this is pretty simple. You just push on the sides. It has a little feet on the bottom. These are rubber feet, but I'm not going to use those. All you have to do is stick the Raspberry Pi in the case the only way it fits, which is pretty simple, but here you go. Then you clip the top of the case right on, and there you have it. You just built a Raspberry Pi 4. I know, super complicated, but this is built to be simple, and it's kind of good that this is simple also kind of sturdy too, kind of surprising. Then over here I'm just going to put this micro SD card in it. Again, this comes preloaded with an operating system so I don't have to do anything before this. Once done, all I have to do is kind of take a second to admire the simplicity of this device and then I can start hooking things up. Of course, any kind of USB thing is pretty simple, but it's just a matter of plugging things into USB. then plugging the power cable in, and of course the HDMI cable. Can't forget the mouse, 
this pretty little mouse, all red and white. Okay, so booting up into the Raspberry Pi 4 operating system, at first it's going to ask me if I want to install it. I'll change it to English US here real quick. Then I'll run through, click this box, click install, confirm that I want to do it, and although I'll fast forward through this part, it does take a little bit of time. I mean, it's writing 4 gigs at 8 megs per second. But either way, once it is finished, boom, it restarts and loads directly into the Raspberry Pi full desktop environment. I'll go through a few basic setup pop-ups in the beginning, including setting a super strong password. And then I just wanted to do some simple tests, see if I could play a video, a 1080p 60 frames per second YouTube video without it stuttering. And unfortunately, I was testing in 720 and 1080p. I was not able to get smooth playback. Part of me kind of expected this, but you know, I was just kind of hoping for a little bit better performance. Not saying that this is a negative review or anything like that, I just wanted to test to see how it ran. And to make sure that I was getting enough speed, I went ahead and ran a quick speed test as well, gotten up to 300 megabits per second. So after the initial build and test is done, the only thing I had left to do in this video was to run a simple game to see how well it ran. It comes with Minecraft Pi Edition, which is kind of cool. It's a free edition, kind of limited, but still kind of cool. So I loaded up a Minecraft world and built a simple rocket ship just to display that the Raspberry Pi can and will build a rocket ship in Minecraft Pi. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you have any ideas of what you want me to do with this, leave them in the comments down below. Of course, always like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.